Well, hello there, my fellow Drupal developers, fans, aficionados, whatever you are with regards to using Drupal. This is Matt Petrowski. It's been a while since I've released a video, and I just wanted to start doing a few more ad hoc videos, not things that I plan. I know that it's been a while since I've posted a video on the Got Drupal website, but I'm intending on increasing the number of videos uh, here and there. I am working, still working with Drupal, so even though it's been well over a year, here we go with a little tip. Now recently I've been working on a site, and currently I don't keep my local development web server running all the time. I'm not always doing Drupal development. I do in the other part of my life. I do FileMaker development and other things. So I wanted to show you how I actually run my web server. Now I switched from using Apache. I'm not using the local Apache. Uh, one thing I am using is um, I used to use, what do you call it? Um, Mac ports. But a friend of mine, um, Brian changed, uh, he got me to switch over to Homebrew. In fact, I'm going to reference his article right now. You're going to find this at um, Brian Gilbert's website. Brian's a friend of mine, and you've got this article, Mac OS X, Nginx, MariaDB, and PHP, and he's using Ager. Uh, now, I'm not using Ager on my local development, and this is very much, he's uh, doing a lot of different sites. I'm usually only doing one or two, uh, a few sites, my own sites. So in particular, what I wanted was something local that was fast. Nginx is it. It's super fast. Also, another reason that I switched to Nginx is because I am using Omega, um, I think it's Omega8.cc. Yeah. These are the people that I'm using to actually host the Got Drupal website. These are the brilliant minds that are running just hyper optimized Nginx servers. Now, they're not running um, something that runs in, fr in front, such as a proxy server like Varnish. Um, I've used Varnish, and you're going to find services like Mercury, but I wanted to emulate what they've got, and that's because I'm using their services. So I'm using their configuration files. I'm using um, all everything on my local machine in order to emulate. But what I want to give you in this video is how I'm actually starting up my services. All of the information that you're going to need with regards to getting Nginx, MariaDB, PHP, Ager, so forth, you're going to find on Brian's website over at Reality Loop. What I use is a startup script, which is simply called web. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to show you this script, and I'll actually attach it to this article so you'll be able to access it. But this is how I start up my web server. I simply just uh, type in web start. So it's very much just a terminal-based thing. It doesn't start up when my machine loads up, so I don't have a um, script that starts up the service. I just want to be able to start it up and do, do it via binary. So I've got web start, web stop, um, web, and you can specify any one given part, web uh, nginx uh, restart or um, stop. You can stop any given uh, particular flavor. Now we're using um, PHP FM, which is much faster because of how it loads. It only loads memory when the script is actually called and when it's um, uh, optimized, then it's very fast, unlike Apache, where it pulls all of the memory required and then retains all of that memory and doesn't really release it, especially after it grows. So PHP FM is really nice and uh, trim and working with Nginx, which can also be a reverse proxy is super awesome. So here we go with web start and it will start my MySQL. It starts PHP. Now because I need to run uh, one of these um, as Nginx in particular, I have to put in my password. Uh, which hopefully I'll get right the first time, and there we go. So what happens is everything's started now, and you're going to see everything if you open up your activity monitor. And I was to, for example, put in PHP, and you can see that PHP FPM is running. If I put in Nginx, I'm going to see there I've got my Nginx. The root process, you can see right there, if I sort it by the process ID, was uh, started as root, but then all other child processes are running as nobody. Uh, for a local development machine, I don't necessarily need this many, but I've got plenty of memory on my machine. And then finally, you've got uh, Maria, or actually if I put in uh, MySQL, which is what it's going to be running under, um, even though it's MariaDB, which is the open source offshoot of what Oracle acquired, 
that tells me that that is running. So from here, I'm able to pretty much run everything. Now, what's really cool is if I need to configure all of my individual sites, a lot of people configure their sites in a bunch of different ways. I happen to use TextMate. So in my configuration file, this web um, binary that actually runs, I can actually type in web conf. And what will happen is it will call TextMate, and TextMate is opening one single document. This is what's so useful to me. It opens the one single document that gives me access to all of my INI comp files and all of my individual sites. So the way that um, Nginx works is it's got these um, sites available, which are sort of your uh, overriding um, they're your general type of preferences, then each site will uh, implement its own individual preferences. So I have this site like a uh, dev mag, which is just a, uh, it's a magazine site that I have for my FileMaker magazine. And so here you can see this Nginx Octopus include. So that's basically an include configuration file that I've pulled down from Git that I'm referencing as part of my default, which is right here, sites enabled 00 default is called, and then everything else builds upon that. You'll have to read a lot more about how Nginx configuration files work, but basically the cool thing is this web little script. So let me open this up for you. We'll type mate, my own bin, and then we'll open web. So we can look at that, and that opened off screen, but we'll bring it on screen. Now, unfortunately, I don't have notes in here where I can reference where I got this from, but this is uh, a script that I pulled off of the web. I should have put that up in the comments somewhere, and so I apologize whoever initially wrote this. I did not. I simply modified it for my own use, but you can see up here up at the top that uh, he also was supporting memcache, which I don't have memcache per currently on my local machine, but I am using MySQL, Nginx, and PHP FPM the three primary that you need. If you do want to test with memcache or other local variables, then of course you'd need to uh, modify the script. But it's all pretty straightforward. You've got web start, web stop, web restart, and then you've got um, all of those for each of the individual. For example, uh, Nginx, PHP, and for MySQL, if there's any one of the three that you want to start. And there's also one in here for memcache, which I mentioned I'm not using. Now at the bottom here, I added this um, elif or the else if part of a shell script that basically calls the mate binary which is installed by textmate which then just passes all of the different paths to all of the different configuration files as one single command and there you go that's what happens is all I have to do on the terminal is type web conf and boom everything's opened in one place I can even create new sites here by adding a new file, and that would make a new site. And then I'm able to go use a nice little tool called Gas Mask. If I want to locally, um, let's see, original file, where is that opening? I don't see it on screen. It's here somewhere. But Gas Mask allows you to edit the hosts file, which allows you to create your local entries, such as uh, dev.mag7, so that it resolves to my local machine. But I'll leave that for another video at another time. I just wanted to give you this cool little uh, script that I found, and the little tip that you can use, if you're using TextMate, you can basically just shoot off one command of webconf and have, have it open as a project with access to all of your configuration files for configuring all of your different sites if you're not using something like Ager, which is uh, definitely documented right here by my friend Brian. So hopefully that gives you a little bit more to uh, work with if you're working on a Mac and with TextMate and you want to do things so that the web services aren't always running, but you can run them anytime you want. All right. Until next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.